The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growl and a problem with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 36, NASDAQ up 27, S&P's up 8.5, gold down 330, traded at 1453 an ounce. We have silver down five cents, sixteen dollars seventy-four cents an ounce. Light sweet crude up fifty-six cents, fifty-seven dollars forty-three cents a barrel. Notes and bonds. You get the ten-year up one tick, one twenty-eight eleven. Thirty-year up two at one fifty-six fourteen. You got to remember, like last last week, folks, monster move lower in the note and bond market. It looks like they want to test those lows. But bottom line, they won't have the volume. Uh, you won't have that expansion of volume because it was so uh, big. We'll see if, if it comes in and rejects its lower price. King dollar. King dollar up 127 ticks, trading 98,326. The euro is at 110. The yen is out here at 109. And the pound is at 128 to 1 US dollar. And, uh, you know, St. Patrick's Day is out here, man. Green across the board? Green, that... green across the board. Record man. territory, man. I, I said on the update are we going to get a 3,100 print in the SP? Are we going to get a 28,000 print in the Dow? Um, and you got President Trump out there. He's going to be cheerleading and in, in the capital of the, uh, the, the markets, New the York. The economic summit. That's so, right. Uh, and now, let's go over to our leprechaun, Mr. Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade, <laughs> Think or Swim. And don't forget, folks, every trading day right here, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time, you want to understand the option market, the futures market, defined risk, outstanding program. If you haven't test-driven yet the Think or Swim platform, it's real easy to do. At our website at TFNN, you're going to see the banner. Hit the banner. Bring it up. You can follow along with Kevin and his team every trading day, trade with paper money. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. You know what? This is a pretty interesting day we have going on here because even though the rest of the week has got some pretty strong economic data points that we're going to be looking at, today's NFIB number, which if you're a data geek like I am, I kind of like this number to look at and read through. And then we got a, a red book number that, that is 5%. These are good, strong numbers. You know, I love to look at the NFIB number. I don't know about you guys, but it's just such a good look at small businesses and what's going on. So, uh, you know what? Not really surprising that the E-minis are following through. Uh, there's just not a lot in the way of this market right now. I mean, right. tomorrow could change with... You know, maybe a CPI number that gives a little inflation, and maybe these bonds start to start start to spike on the downside a little bit. But you know, and and get yield spiking. But boy, I don't see a lot to get in the way of this market right now, guys. Yeah, you know, and we, I mean, because we're in the market, Kevin uh, and Tom. You know, we speak a lot about large caps and and small caps. Of, you know, public companies. But the reality is that small business runs the United States. Right. I mean, exactly. you know, I mean, that that's where, you know, all our neighborhoods, you know, they got and, and, and that definition of small business, folks, you know, can be three or four people. But, you know, this, think about, you know, how many plumbing places, the yeah. air conditions, you got 50, right. 60, you got 50 manufacturing to 100 places. Employees, yeah. definitely. You know, you're, you're talking about a lot of employment. And, you know, what's really cool is that it seems that those businesses are not over their head. Because every day that I go to work, I'm looking at all these trucks, Kevin, right? And I'm saying yeah. to myself, man, it's amazing how many, you know, companies are putting people to work. You know, that's 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 what it seems like. They're not all Amazon And some trucks. of the biggest yeah. problems that the NFIB is talking about is getting labor yes. for these companies. Small businesses are having trouble hiring. Right. And, and, and what they talk about in their report is how all the speculation – about a coming downturn and recession just absolutely did not show up. And now you're talking about, a, a, you know, employers that are trying to catch up from the last month. Any hesitation in this economy, they're playing catch up on now. And the NFIB fired back on their numbers better than expected. And, you know, the comments out of their CEO and their economists were pretty powerful. Yeah, and it's going to get so intriguing because before we know it, I mean, Thanksgiving is in two weeks, Yeah, right? And right. 
what happens, folks, is that, you know, and I'm sure, like, Kevin, Kevin talks a lot about it when we come into the spring going into the summer. Well, let, let me tell you something, man. Between, you know, Thanksgiving, the week after Thanksgiving and Christmas, it's pretty hard for this market to ever get slammed. I'm not saying ever, but the reality is, is that, you know, guess what? Um, kind of where you are at that level, it, it's, you're not going to get monster movements. You know what I'm saying? And, right. And, and, here's, and here's what... I think people need to look at as we're going into the Christmas holiday season. Americans have more money in their pocket via more jobs and better jobs. Americans have more money in their pocket based on lower gas prices. And all that leads to consumer spending, which we're seeing in the data. The consumer spending is the strongest part of this economy. And if you look at what's going to happen over the Christmas holidays, it's going to be interesting to watch these big four retailers oh. and how they fire on all cylinders, especially like Target, because Target has made that commitment in terms of toys and Christmas gifts to kind of try at least to own Christmas. Yes. Yeah, no, I, I can see that. Hey, how about, uh, I mean, good old Amazon. Holy cow. I mean, they're, they're you know, they, of course, we know they, they buy Whole Foods. But now they're going in lock, stock, and barrel. It looks like, you know, into uh, basically brick-and-mortar grocery right. stores. I mean, that's... that's it's Isn't like, it amazing, Tom, how everything that's happening in retail, all the brick-and-mortars are developing e-commerce, right? Yes. Make no mistake, when Walmart releases earnings later in the week, the number one thing everyone's going to look at is how are their e-commerce sales growing. Yeah. But then there's Amazon on the other side, who's getting more into the brick and mortar side of the business. So you've got all the retail sector, via e-commerce or brick and mortars, merging towards each other. Yeah, I know. You know? They, 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 so yeah, it's fascinating what is happening, but brick and mortar is not dead. Clearly, no. it's not dead. I right? think, you know, and I think what these firms are trying to figure out now is delivery of these goods and that last mile that they always talk about, which is the most expensive part of the delivery service. Yeah, there's no doubt. And I remember, I mean, you know, Tommy, you and I, we even like two years ago, a year and a half, we almost could, you could almost feel the turn. We talked about it. That, yeah. hey, man, whoever stayed alive is staying alive. Yeah. Right. And now we have the other side of it because what Amazon said, uh, I don't know if it was Amazon or the study, it was a study that they had done. That in the grocery business, this status is wild. That two to one, people want to pick their groceries up yep. at the grocery store. You know, they don't have to, they can order online. Yeah. They want to pick up the grocery versus getting delivery. Yeah. You know, so exactly. that, that was. I mean, box stuff, paper goods, no one cares. Right. But you're not going to buy it any produce yeah. or yes. anything like that or any piece of meat that you're right. not going to look at. Right. And, and at least make a decision on it. It's just never going to happen. I agree. And, you know, it factors into my mind. I've used uh, Uber Eats, right? Yeah. And you got to, yep. I'm a little, just not, not even, I want to say skeptical, right? But Uber Eats, man, there is anybody in the world is picking up your food. They have it in their car by themselves for a period of 10 to 15 minutes. I've read some articles of things that can happen to that food and that thing. Well, it's just there. That's yeah, that's fine. a process. When you start talking about delivering all your groceries for your family, people have the same exact kind of worry. And I wonder how they're going to tackle that. Fear. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, you, you can't walk through a grocery store now without seeing some employee from that grocery store walking through creating, you know, a delivered cart of, oh. uh, of groceries. Oh, yeah. and we have Publix, for, they have a whole area of I see it in every grocery store I'm in. It's amazing. Definitely. But yeah. that's the, you know, Definitely. And groceries are, are evolving. That's no for doubt. sure. Kevin, you have a great one, safe one, right here, 45 minutes from now, folks. Have a great one, Kevin. Thank you. Thanks for having me on, guys. Thanks, Thanks Kevin. You. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today.
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrial's up 51. NASDAQ up 34. S&P's up 10 and a half. And I know you're going to hear this a lot today, folks, but we got to go through Disney. Hey, we're yeah. in the market, man. We're not yeah. talking about just fun and games and, and Star Wars. I mean, this is uh, quite an entry into the streaming world, which is changing the way that we view content, digest content, mm -hmm. view televisions. And Disney Plus goes live this morning. So they become uh, the platform became available early this morning. Some of my friends are already on there. And uh, there were a few hiccups. You yeah. know, they had a, they had kind of just the the scrolling dot of the internet loading. You right. know, we're all familiar with that type of deal. But nonetheless, they're looking for 90 million users in about five years. They go live this morning, so they got in there. They're referencing in terms of now. One thing that I heard this morning, which people will find intriguing, some of their content, a lot of their content, actually downloadable. Netflix um, offers some, but not all for sure. So that's a big deal, right? Where you can download it bring it with you. You have it on the tablet in the car really? type deal. Yeah, so not all of it, again, but wow. this is where they're going to be trying to compete in different areas. And what is ESPN Plus? Is that? You know, I should know better myself okay. in terms of what that exactly entails. I'm not exactly sure, okay. but obviously it's a plethora of programs from ESPN, right. a number of their games. I'm not sure if that's a direct access to the ESPN itself stream that's on cable providers. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, interesting. Um, but we, we'll seems... all find out real soon, man, because yeah. I agree that, you know, and I saw uh, an opinion article from Bloomberg. This is not, this is just the news article talking about it. There's an opinion article out there talking about, maybe we'll pull it up, that bundles of the future. Right. Because I believe the the Disney Plus is it six ninety nine I believe it yeah, might 699, be six ninety nine and it's like thirteen dollars. Yeah, that's twelve ninety nine is yeah, the bundle with Hulu and ESPN. Exactly. Plus. Now there's I read a cool article that you're only able to watch I believe it's one or two at the same time. So if you have three TVs in your house, okay, you can't have three Disney Plus streams going at the same time if you I bundle. See. You can't have three ESPN Plus, but you can have. Disney Plus streaming, you can have ESPN Plus streaming, you can have Hulu. So it is where if it's one family household, you know, and maybe the kids are watching Disney, okay. but it's not meant to be right now where maybe you can share it with, you know, we could share uh, a service maybe and you're streaming one, I'm streaming the other, we're yeah. both streaming the same thing. Look at this thing. So if you're a Disney fan club member, you can do a prepaid for three years at less than $4 a month. They're, they just have a lot of, you know, avenues. And then it's already some 19 million Verizon 
communication customers will be able to get the service for free for the first year. And I yeah. think that has to do with an upgraded data service. Um, if you have, you know, a, you're paying for internet via Verizon, you're paying for an elevated data service, you're going to be able to get a, a year of that immediately. And then just like you said, they got the, um, the, the bundle, which is just an amazing bundle in terms of price, because I think that knocks about five, six, seven bucks off if you get them all alone. They're, uh, they're probably all six, seven dollars by themselves, but you package them together, you get them for 13. It's pretty inexpensive, man. And when you got the likes of Star Wars, Avengers, yeah. they just bought the whole Fox franchise that comes with The Simpsons, the likes of that, let alone Mickey Mouse, Donald Dunk, um, Kevin Hicks talking about the Jungle Book, right? And they, you know, yeah. another one of the headlines, they're betting big on nostalgia. You just got so many different content art, um, titles from, yeah. from the likes of the years past. So some users reported trouble getting the app to work as soon as they tried to log on early hours. So they're having a few hiccups. They certainly are. Those are going to be highlighted across the internet on day one. But, you know, when they talk about 90 million users, that's five years, okay? So I would not get too panicked on, on the first few hours of that launch. Um, I, I, I plan on signing up myself, probably yeah. for the bundle. I just cut the cord. And uh, one of the things I was, you know, it's, uh, it's amusing that even my friends and I in our group chat this morning, we're talking about it. And we're talking about Netflix versus, right? right? I have some friends, huge Netflix, we call them fanboys, you know, okay. huge. And... Um, the, the, the debate is, you know, I can see myself canceling Netflix occasionally. Yeah. Binging when I want to. Right. Coming back when I want to. And right. I enjoy some of their programs, man. You know, whether it's uh, Ozarks, whether there's, there's a bunch of names out there. But I, if you sign up for ESPN+, Plus, that's something you might not cancel, right? Sports go on all year long. You don't that's just sign up yeah. and binge. Right. If you're signing up for Disney+, Plus for your kids... Kids aren't into binging and then not watching, right? They're going to be watching right. 12 months a year. So, so the the grab on the you know the stickiness they would call it, right? Uh, of not canceling, I, I give a leg up to Disney. And let's just see how they're trading right now because I think they got another pop up today. Uh, yeah, they sure did. So up two dollars thirteen cents. Now they made it as high in their earnings last week uh, overnight as I believe like 141 and change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But before those earnings coming in, it was at about 132 and change. Right. So right. the market really liking the deals that they made with Verizon because it's all going to be about trying to uh, catch up with Verizon. I mean, Veri ah, excuse me, with uh, Netflix. CMCSK. I got to see what Comcast. CSA. Just the last one's A. Doing it. Yeah. Because this is like, you know, I. You're at forty-five dollars. I mean, they've had plenty of time to change their mo, and it looks like chart-wise, they they are making a lot more money doing different things because this is at a high. Look at this. Yeah. You know. Yep. So that's intriguing, right? Yeah. Look at that. Not bad. That's pretty intense. That looking at Comcast, folks, that you you're at all-time highs too. Just you're right next to them. Definitely. You know. So uh, bottom line there is that uh, <laughs> evidently. Either more customers, more everything. Yeah. Um, I mean, like we, hey, how are you, you going to stream that Disney Plus service? You're going to need internet. You're going to buy some S&Ps. Ah, uh, no, I'm, I'm waiting for, we got a 50, <laughs> we need 50 cents more, man. I'm waiting for the 3100 print party. Who's we'll, going who's gonna to get the print? We'll get the candles Let's out. Let's get our man, Mr. Basil Chapman. I think, ba I think Basil deserves to get the print. He loves these even numbers. Man. Even numbers, yeah. 3100 coming at it. Maybe we'll get 28,000 in the Dow, too, man. Boeing yesterday, oh, right? I heard that. Quite yeah, a pop. Right. Right. Um, I mean, we're at 27,007 and change. We're within 1% of uh, 28,000 in the Dow, and you're going to have uh, the you're going to you're going to have the biggest cheerleader of all in terms of market prices. The president out there at, at noon talking about, and this is where I heard a great analyst. You got to keep in mind, he's tweeting out there the economy's so great, market at all-time highs, and then the next day the economy's in so much trouble the the Fed needs to cut. So I imagine. Uh, I'd, I'd love to hear how somebody who believes both of those pairs of those oh, two yeah. conversations. Oh, it's going it's to be great. It's going to be a binary event. Yeah. That's, someone came on Bloomberg and said the same thing. It's going to definitely be a binary event. Yep. The, um, no, moment of silence. We're 50 cents away. Let's hit it. I, oh, there, there we is. go. We got it. There Bingo. we go. Perfect. There I it time is. the moment of silence well. Hit it. <laughs> hit it right in the button. Now yeah. the real question is going to be, can it get over it? Okay. Down yeah. we go. 3,000 by the end of not, the day. Not no, that 3,100 means anything. No, no. But, it means it actually means nothing, right? But right. sometimes those round numbers as well, they don't necessarily mean nothing because... I, no doubt. We're all humans. Yeah. Human human right. uh, emotions right. do play a part in, in things. So, oh, yeah. You know. Big time. Big time. Pretty wild. Yeah. Let's go take a look at some of the higher volume equities out here. And 
We'll see. It's a little bit too early to find out what's going to have any volume in, in this market. You get uh, Chesapeake, that's uh, on the way out of business. Yes. And it's down another seven cents. That's at 72 cents. You got uh, Roku's up five and a half dollars. You got Bank of America up five cents. Walt Disney's a big one. That's up two bucks. Um, Dean Foods, man, this is pretty yeah. intense. So, so look at this, folks. BK. I mean, this has been going down for quite some time, but man, I remember when this company was a powerhouse. And uh, evidently, they just expanded, expanded, and... Yep, they, they are not trading. They're halted. Yeah, that's... That's, <laughs> that's what happens when they, you announce you're going bankrupt, they, I guess. They filed, and... Uh, <clears throat> man, oh, man, just even since September, look at that. Yeah. You know, one-way trip. 35 bucks down to zero. Man, look at that. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow's up 64, Nasdaq's up 37, S&P's up uh, 12, and we did get over that uh, 3,000, too. Yeah. Uh, 3,000.75, I think, uh, thus far. Yeah. And let's, let me see if I can pull up some of these images. I think they're going to load up. Let's see if they're going to pull up. Because, uh, no, nah, they're causing me some problems, so we'll go back in. Bottom line, they get a lot of stuff. Yeah, going. you know, we were looking, again, just Disney Plus in terms of they got Pixar, they got Marvel, they got Fox. Um, they have the uh, Darth Vader on the yep. front page. You want to watch Star Wars, so pretty cool, man. We'll see how. 
Let's go take a look at DHI. So, uh, your DH Horton come out with uh, <coughs> numbers. Me. Numbers were better than expected. Stock is a little volatile out here this morning. Yeah. So, you're up a buck right now. You're at 53.65. Two bucks off the high, though, right? Man, oh, man. Yeah. So, yeah, look at that. Okay, so let's see what we have here. You're going to take out 54, 3.8 million. Well, let's be interesting to see how this plays out because this could be an ABC structure up. Let's see what they have to say. Okay, so you got uh, three months through September, purchase contract jumped 14 percent from last year to 13,130. Um, Not a bad number for 90 days, 13,000 orders for houses. Seriously, right? right? And see, this is a smart one right here. Look at this. So D.H. Horton was one of the first builders to focus on lower-cost homes for millenniums. That's yeah, paying millennium. off. The, yeah. yep. uh, you get the drop in mortgage rates, which is helping anyone in the, in the mortgage business. Definitely. Um, yeah, and they're just saying they had tough year-over-year -year comps from how things were rocking, I guess, a year ago with where rates were. Good. Okay. Yeah. Lowered lumber costs is helping them. So, Can I just see what this yeah. chart is? What is that on? Home orders. Okay. I mean, look at that home orders number, man. Wow. That is quite a number. And, and you know, I wonder what kind of houses they were producing back here, though. To, were they more expensive? That's probably what they're saying. They've shifted to a more affordable house, yeah. pushing out more of them. But, my goodness, you're talking about almost a three-fold increase um, from 20000 on an annual basis, just over that in 2012, to now more than 55000 for this year. Let's see if it's helping the rest of the sector. Take a look at Lana. Not really. Now, would Lennar be more expensive homes? I guess. Yeah. Okay. It is. Um, and they were Lennar was higher though. They were up to sixty oh nine, yeah. so they're pairing yeah. that as well. Yeah. Uh, and then let's look. Look at this. It, well, there's the average. Yeah, four ten. So they delivered. Look at this. Company did forty five thousand homes in twenty eighteen. Average price four hundred ten thousand. Yeah. I mean, just to put it, I mean that on. I forget what the 20, but uh, DHI, 55,000 plus, but they're on a much smaller number. But I wonder what, what's and the margins too, right? That's a big number in terms of what's the margin. The margin's mar probably higher on a more expensive house. Yeah, that'd be cool to look at because they run about 17%. So it's... I imagine it's going to differ yeah. though if you're selling a $210,000 house or a $410,000 oh, house. Because yeah. if they were all the same, you can sell more $210,000 houses. Yeah. So oh, yeah. I imagine the margins go up, but you're going to find less buyers on that the, elevated level. Yeah, the land cost is the thing that they get the land. Yeah, this would take too long. To yeah. Into. But, um, you know, so those interest rates, and it, we'll see, folks, uh, I'll bring up the bond right now. The, I don't believe we've got down to the bottom of that uh, tenure yet. But this is a big area. There's no doubt about it, man. Yeah, we're not there yet. So, your the low of last week was uh, one twenty seven thirty one. Okay. But yep. guess what? At noon time, we might be there. And yeah. where are you talking? You talking about the the uh, this area over here? When you say down there? Uh, no, I was just talking about the low. Oh, okay. The Four days ago that we yeah. haven't today. The, okay. So we're talking. First off, we're talking about the low of the downdraft, one twenty seven thirty one. Now the 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 breakout area is still much lower than that, one twenty seven twenty one. That's when we broke topside on August 1st. Only 10 ticks to yeah. say much lower. Right. You know, it's, right, it's pretty close. Right. <laughs> pretty close. Oh, yeah. Listen, man. That's, it's, that's it's, within 10 you know, ticks, I'd that say, gets you I'd say that's right next that to it. That gets you to 2%. Uh, For the uh, yield? Yeah. yeah. And what are, we, yeah. what are we sitting at right now? Because we're pretty close. When one you point, did the news, it was 1.9 something. Yeah, right? 1.93. As I yeah. said, 1.93, 1.94. And man, oh, man, it's pretty intriguing. Three-month difference. Look at that move, yeah. man. And that, uh... That's almost half a percent. Yeah, exactly. It's four-tenths to be exact, right? Or just uh, a little bit over. Yeah. You no, know, it's just, just under a half percent yeah. to really be, you know, I mean, 1.957. Oh, yeah, half right. A, that's a, yeah, we're right there. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, we just moved last week 0.15. Yeah. So this is a three-month. Three <laughs> and then you look at things, I mean, look at the spread. We had a full percent spread in six months. You went from 2.4 down mm -hmm. to 1.4, and now we're back at, just call it two for simple math, right? right? I mean, just... Mammoth moves. Now put that on a year just for a second. Oh, are we curious. ready for these moves? No. <laughs>
I yeah. see. So you're still at the, the, the lower end for the year. Yeah. I mean, it was such. It was such. Let's just yeah. put it, it was such a, a big move down. You know, it really right. was on the yield. I mean, it's it's tough to remember that we were sitting at a 3.1 10 year. Right. Um, within the last 12 months. Yeah. I no. mean, look at that. Right. Let's back it up even more. Uh, where are we? Put it on a year. Look at that. Right. <sighs> And then let's back it up to two years. We get a little bit more volatility. So there you go. We're right where we were, man. November 13th. 3.25. 3.25. And then you trade down to that low September 4th. So within two months. And, you know, it's not even a one-way move, which is remarkable. We go from 1.44 up to a high of 1.9, back down to 1.5, and now we're back above 1.9. Yeah. So much for lack of volatility in safety in bonds. Oh, yeah, yeah, and that's that would you're not even talking bond funds, folks. Okay, just bonds. Uh, yeah, that's the ten-year U.S. Yeah, <laughs> Treasury. I mean, exactly. So let's go over. You know, we're gonna there's gonna be action in Europe. That's the bottom line. But these, you know, the euro is just hanging here. The, the, the pound is just kind of hanging here. The euro is down slightly. We're at 110.07. Uh, pound. Yeah, sideways market. Yeah. You know, because so December is going to be here before we know it. It's going to get intriguing to see how this baby shakes out. We go over to the gold market. They smoked gold last week, came back. Uh, smoked it yesterday, came back. So fourteen forty eight ninety. Oh, look at this. So it already tested it this morning. We already hit fourteen. No, no, no we didn't hit it. We hit fourteen forty nine fifty. Yeah, I'd like to see it hit it today. You know. Yeah. Get it out of the way. The breakout here is fourteen forty eight eighty. Was that wild? And we hit fourteen forty eight ninety yesterday. It's like okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. Wants to come down there and. Smack that baby. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll see where that uh, shakes out. The dollar certainly, you know, is not getting a big bid. I mean, it's up 191. It's trading yeah. at 98. Yeah. Uh, 392. It's trying to make it over the highs of last week. That's what it was doing this morning anyway. Yeah, it's right at them. Yeah. Speaking of another little bit of volatility going on. And, yeah. Uh, We'll take a look if we can jump to Tyson Foods after the break. All right? oh, yeah. They got their earnings as well. They look to be bleak, but man, oh man, a rebound trading higher after the open. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Dow, Dow up 60, Nasdaq up 42, S&P's up 12 and a half. Come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com. 
educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 70. Nasdaq's up 44. S&P's up 13. And they just uh, hit gold again. Down 1030, trading 1446.80. That was quick. So man. as they, yeah, as they uh, push the market uh, one way, they push gold the other way. Yeah. Tyson. So let's go take a look at Tyson. This is yeah. pretty intriguing. So we'll pull up the chart first. All right. So there's Tyson's action this morning, man. Talk about a reversal of fortunes. They come out with their earnings. A little bit of a miss. But the market kind of feeds into, feed, no pun intended, feeds yeah. into what they're really saying. You get the conference call that begins at 9 a.m. That really puts some fire underneath it. You now got Tyson up almost 5%, and you made it almost 10 full dollars from that low that we made just after 7 a.m. this morning. And to get into what they're saying that's driving that, pretty interesting here in terms of... Uh, they're in the commodity business in terms of food, oh, right? Yeah. You have a swine, Protein. swine fever going on in Asia. And uh, they're being able to charge higher prices for their products, right. and that's going to persist, and that mar that's going to help the margins, and that's going to help their growth into next year. That's what the CEO is saying. So looking to put the challenges of the last few months in the rear view, Tyson Foods painted an optimistic picture for the fiscal year ahead as the spread of the African swine fever in Asia pushes up global protein demand and prices. So top U.S. meat pro pro processor, excuse me, Missed earnings estimates, that's the reason for the flush down yeah. in the beginning in, the, in this quarter, but expects at least high single-digit growth in the fiscal year as, quote, we're well positioned to take advantage of opportunities in the global marketplace. Um, so there's uncertainty in beef, chicken, and pork markets due to wild cards like African swine fever, which is wiping out hog herds in China, the biggest consumer and producer. Many expect the disease to provide upside for the U.S. meat processors in the first half of 2020. And uh, the CEO saying we're very encouraged, but we don't want to put forth a number that could be low. Well, he put forth enough to give that stock quite a pop. Anytime the world loses that amount of protein supply and demand is growing, prices are impacted. Um, so this is a pretty cool chart here that looks to their margins. Okay, so their margins are getting a little bit crimped, but this On year... The chicken. Yes, yeah. especially. So you're looking at whether it's quarter by quarter, right, 2017, 2018, 2019... The bar on the farthest left is the chicken margin. You see they were pulling in 10 plus percent on margins in the late 2017, still relatively high, staying up there in March of 2018. Then you really start to see a slump when you look at that left of the four bars for margins. That's the chicken. There's your chicken margin. And man, just down to 2% now. But really what's interesting, right? The one that's kind of, a, we'll call it a blue, we'll call it an aqua. Look at that spike there, 10 plus percent on the pork as right. you have the, the swine fever wiping out herds. They're able to charge more. And uh, yeah, and then you got beef and prepared foods as well in there. No, excuse me, which one is this? Yeah, that's going to be beef. That's beef. Yeah, so beef is the big one. That's that beef is the big one, on. correct. Is, yeah, yeah, right. That really has right. spiked higher as those hogs are getting wiped out and cattle, right. I'm sure. Because right. um, yeah. the pork is the green. Okay. Yeah. And then, oh, yeah, they don't even have, oh, they have the blue as the chicken. Oh, that's weird, huh? huh. Yeah, they're kind of all over the place yeah. here. They should have put these in correlating order from where yeah. they put them on the graph. Right. And I don't think they did. 
No, they didn't. That's yeah. a that's a lesson in chart um, in structuring. Yes. Uh, so here's the Springfield, Arkansas-based company expects export markets to absorb increased U.S. protein production of as much as three percent. That's a big number, man. When you talk about you know producing meat, not accounting for impacts from the African swine fever. Beef operating margins are forecast at six to six and a half to seven and a half, while both chicken and pork will be six to eight, and prepared foods ten to twelve. Yeah. Pretty wild, man. It is. Tyson. And then, you know, it, it, I guess maybe in the call they had something about their, you know, fake meat, but we'll, we'll see. They how may that, have. That's yeah. probably not factoring in for the next year, but it is um, interesting when we've done the comparisons before, right? You pull up a company like Tyson, $31.5 billion market cap right now, and let's see how Beyond is doing. Beyond Meat, if you're in the market, you're comparable, $4.6 billion. Um, company and to put it in context, what are they taking in? 100 million, 200 million, somewhere in that degree in their revenue. Yeah, this this fiscal year, 277 million valued at 4.6 billion. Well, guess what? Tyson. Again, we've said it before. If you weren't, weren't, watch, weren't watching the program before, I mean, we were talking about it back here, man. Just right. crazy valuations when they were up to 10, 12, 13, 14 billion, and um, Tyson was an investor and beyond. They know what they do. They were right. they're purposefully an investor to be aware of the technology, be, be aware of what they're doing, so that when they come to market with a similar product, they have that, um, you and know, to check this out, intellectual so, capital, yes, all that. That you know, the uh, CEO isn't selling, but guess what? Oh, everybody else is. Everyone, huh? the other management team, as well, the management team is. Okay? Yeah. So what this is about is that you know the lockup is you know. On, I okay. mean, they can sell if they'd like right now. Yeah, it's off, actually. Yeah, it's then. off, yeah. right. So, uh, you know, the CEO, Ethan Brown, may not be selling, but the, guess what? Other executives, uh, you got CFO Mark Nelson. He moved 70,000 shares at $5.7 million. Uh, Chief people officer sold 10,000 shares at age 24. You get, Boy, uh, you got a lot of chiefs. They call them the C-suites, yeah. right? You don't want the C-suites dumping all their shares. Right. Man. Chief growth officer sold 50,000. Now the board member shared 133,000. I mean, 50,000. That's four four million bucks, man. For oh the yeah, chief yeah. Growth officer taking yeah. four million bucks out of a company. Yeah. Um, Big numbers, man. It's huge numbers when you think. Uh, so what did we just say? This is staggering when you put it in. Now normally we're just used to such big numbers, right? They say, right. ah, they took off, you know, four million. The company is only valued at 4.6 billion. You got executives. You just add up all of these. Well, there's right. five million. The, this guy took off 50,000 shares. That's four million. I mean, that's 10, 15 million dollars. Mind the guy with 133,000. Yeah, exactly. He's that's, a board member. It's big money. That's yeah. big, big shares to dump in a company that's only four billion dollars. You know. Right. And well, there you go. That explains it, right? Shares outstanding. This is not a lot. All right. Yeah. Five point seven million shares outstanding. Yeah. yeah. And we just talked about millions. You know, almost uh, hundreds of thousands approaching a million shares being sold. Easy. Yeah. Okay, we got to get over to gold. They're banging on gold here. Let's see what we got. So you got, oh, that's not bad, nine bucks. I thought the way they were the talking was down a lot further than that. Oh okay, boy. so 1448.80, that's the number you want to keep an eye on out here, folks. You hit that 1446.20. You know, the, your breakout area is the, no, that, uh, the 5th of August. And we'll see uh, how this shakes out. Smacked it again. Yeah. And S I Z. Let's see what Silver's doing out here. So you get the sixteen sixty six. Numbers lower. Sixteen fifty eight's the number there. That's the uh, same day. Say sixteen fifty eight. Yeah, that's yeah. the beginning of the okay. strength on the seventh of August. Okay. And what's intriguing is I think the gold day lines up to August 1st. Yeah. Just so to keep things in context. Yeah. Silver a little bit different, but I, I believe know. gold lined up, which would be 1606. Yeah. Just if people are out there. Oh, yeah. It's no, August it's, 1st, it's, and that was the big day in bonds when they had a huge yep. uh, day. A lot going yep. on. Oh, that's, that was, yeah, that's the, that's the breakout in bonds. Yeah. For sure. 877-927-6648. Dow. Dow is up 65. Nasdaq's up 46. S&P's up 13 and a half. You get Trump speaking in an hour and 10 minutes. Where is it going to go, baby? Come right back.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Basil Chapman has just announced a live 90-minute webinar he'll be conducting for subscribers to his daily trading newsletter, The Opening Call, which will be taking place Tuesday, November 19th from 5 till 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, titled A Comprehensive Review of the Chapman Wave Techniques and Market Outlook Ahead for 2020. This is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial to The Opening Call while gaining access to Basil's live subscriber event taking place later this month. With some stock picks up 15 to 30% this year alone, Basil will review many of the Chapman Wave techniques that helped in their successful analysis, as well as providing the sectors and stocks that he thinks will be of importance heading into 2020. For all the details, check out the opening call on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow up 69, Nasdaq up 46, S&P's up 13 and a half. And as you come over to our website, folks, at TFNN, you're going to see our man, Mr. Basil Chapman. He's going to be uh, coming up with you, growling and prowling with you. Uh, if you go uh, to the front page of TFNN, go right under featured content, you're going to see our man, the opening call. And he's going to be doing a workshop for his subscribers, uh, November 19th, which is, what, a week from, uh, two weeks from? One week from today, man. Oh, man. That's, I was That's... waiting to say it. See, I feel like when we first started talking about it, Basil had announced he started working on it about two and a half weeks out from the date. We're one week out from November 19th, man. Today, November 12th. Pretty one intense. week from today, Basil will be in there. Subscribers, 5 till 6.30. So I encourage everybody to go out there, check out the opening call, Basil's great daily trading service. He puts out updates every morning for his subscribers. He puts out updates over the weekend. You'll gain access to that 90-minute live webinar. He'll be in there talking about with some stock picks up 15 to 30 percent intra year by request. Basil's going to be reviewing the techniques that helped in their successful analysis. He's going to be talking about the rhythm of price movement in all time frames, the practical application of the moving averages Basil uses, looking at his yeah. charts, the arc and cup formations, and of course, the basis for everything he does the Chapman wave notations on those markets. Pretty cool that we're going to be coming into all time highs. Where are we at? We had a D, we had an F. Basil, of course, filling in yesterday for you. We were talking about some of that, man, those peaks. And uh, so he'll be in there for 90 minutes with subscribers and a week Dow from today. And Dow just went to another high today, and the S&P just went to another high today, right? 
<coughs> Excuse me. That is correct. So check it out on the front page a week from today. I encourage you to sign up right now. Gain a little bit of intrigue in terms of what he does. Basil was encouraging his subscribers to email him with questions ahead of time that he can talk Sweet. about. So get in there. Check it out one week from today. Folks, stay right there. We got our man, uh, Kevin Hinkson, is the team from uh, Think or Swim coming up next. Then we got our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks I got a little cough. I'll, I'll give you a reprieve there. Yeah, look at him, folks.